Okay, good afternoon. Uh, for today's topic, we're going to discuss about developing office competencies. But let me summarize last uh, meeting's discussion, which wherein we discuss about the different competencies uh, uh, of a worker, you know. So the most common uh, ability or competency that uh, employer will be looking for a certain applicant is number one is you have the ability to process uh, i mean uh, word processing and then we also discuss data processing skills or competency information management and transmission and general managing and communication so we if basically if you have all these four different competencies so most likely you will be accepted no, in your job now when you're already employed in a particular company and you have these abilities so most likely you will be i know or for promotion or probably be a success successor or replacement no so, so those are the things that we basically discussed last meeting okay and for today again how are we going to develop office competencies so that will be our topic for today so as the learning objectives for this topic we will be able to describe issues that affect achieving company goals so what are those probably barriers or things or issues or concerns that would affect no how a company uh, achieve their goals and then explain the general expectation for workers and prepare a strategy for developing office competencies so these are our learning objectives now companies seek to hire the qualified workers who will help the company be successful of course no so in every company when they look for their employees during the recruitment process actually what happened or what transpired there is the recruiter will try to assess the applicant if the applicant has all those abilities no written or in their job description like for example if i will be looking for for a receptionist uh, based on our job description the job description as again will guide guide you, you know, or the, the recruiter or the uh, the recruitment staff on what particular or, or what particular skills that uh, he will or she will be looking for you know now for example if you are looking for a receptionist once competency or skill that you are looking for is good communication skills person pleasant personalities you would be able to interact with people different kind of people uh, uh, if that particular job entails a lot of uh, typing or keyboarding skills so that's additional capability or competency or skills that we will be looking for no? so the reason for that is actually in every position or every job in the company there is actually uh, or that there is really a role no in order to achieve the company's goal okay for example if you you will if a company will be looking for an engineer since the company will be is trying to build a new building for example okay and then the company will be hiring civil engineers of course that is because uh, civil engineers will help the company build the, the building no? or the project being uh, or the project itself okay and then all workers are expected to help achieve company goals so again, there's a purpose, there's a role, responsibilities, 
that the worker should perform in order to help the company achieve its goal. Okay. So for example, if uh, if you are into selling automobiles or cars, no. So if the company will hire for sales executives, uh, of course the company will hire those uh, those applicants who already have experience or has the ability to build trust with their clients. Okay. So or those applicants who would be able to sell their products of course because they wanted to achieve revenue or profit okay which is part of the company's goal so goals are simply expressed as a long-term vision statement okay so in each companies or every companies they they can in their orientation especially yeah during the orientation the vision mission of the company as well as its goals and core values will be discussed during the company orientation. The purpose of this one is because they wanted for you to know as a member of the company uh, what the company would like to achieve, no? Since you will play your role on that certain company to help the company achieve the the, the different uh, company goals okay so each one of you will have a respective role or responsibilities okay so that is actually to align no? the mindset of each member of the companies that each one of you has the responsibilities in achieving the company's goal okay and then issues such as quality management customer satisfaction and teamwork affect how successful a company is achieving its goal. Okay, so we'll discuss more on this later. Now, total quality management or TQM. This is establishing and maintaining high standards in how work is done and in the creation and delivery of goods and services. Okay, so most company, in order to achieve its goal, it needs to develop a uh, proper procedure or the uh, right procedure, no? Of course, like for example, if they need to make a product or deliver some service, they make sure that it is of highest quality. And of course, uh, the services are very good okay so the trust of tqm is that managing quality is everyone's business so some companies especially if they wanted to achieve these things there some company use the slogan quality is everybody's business in other words from lowest to top to top rank of a certain company their mindset should be quality is everybody's business so it's it, it should be everybody's business so everyone must think about delivering quality okay now tqm is very important in companies no why because whether you are dealing with products or services you are actually trying to achieve the best quality that you can give no? or produce why? Because it would re actually reflect your, or it, it would be a, a, a kind of one way on how you achieve your goals, no? So like, for example, if you want, if the company would like for the, the end of the year, you wanted to increase revenue by 10%, for example, or 20%, then they should develop or deliver services of high quality. Because if you produce high quality uh, product, customers or clients will be doing, I mean, will purchase you repeatedly. I mean, purchase your products repeatedly, you know? So they buy with you uh, several items because they are satisfied with the products they you are selling. Now, if you are into service, of course, they will go back to you if they need their your services because they are also happy and satisfied okay so that's why 
that's the reason why all companies really strive to develop a total quality management overall tool. And continuous improvement. So this is being alert at all times to ways of working more productively. So could this be done in a better way? So that is how you ask if you wanted to continuously improve, no? So it helps workers think creatively about improvements. Now, again, if you are a production worker or if you deliver service, now you would be able to think about this on how you continuously improve your products or services by try to ask uh, to by uh, try to ask or assess no the products or the complaints for example what are the customers are saying through their customers feedback no so are they happy if they are not so what's the what's the problem they encountered some customers also give suggestions on how you improve your products or services okay so by listening to them you would be able to improve your services and as a company if you wanted to be profitable you should have this mindset mindset of continuous improvement so you should not stop or, or on a particular stage no or you should strive for continuous improvement because nowadays there are a lot of competitors so if a lot of for example very common for online seller there are uh, several sellers who sell the same product and how are you going to to be a preferred seller of course some seller uh, think of strategies like promotions or uh, anything that would would entice their customers to to buy their products okay so that's one example then customer satisfaction. So most uh, most workers or employees, especially if they are new to the company, the message being given to them during the orientation is they are said to believe that they are there to serve customers. Okay, so with that they need to be uh friendly and all their tasks involve serving their customer okay so thinking through what you do in relation to what it will mean to customer is a key to focus in many companies in other words you try to to think first if you will you're going to do this would it make your com uh, will, will it make your customers happy or satisfied if you try to develop a product if you're one of those uh, responsible to develop products now if you try to develop a product that would really uh, serve the needs and wants of their of your customers so that should be the mindset no in order to achieve such customer satisfaction. And of course, if you're into service, then you're trying to think of, if you do this, or will your customer be happy or satisfied? Now, one common complaint of a customer is if their needs are not being met, no? So if example, they expect something from you as uh, as an employee of the organization like for example very simple if they ask you for a basic information about your company and you don't know what the answer is then of course the impression will or the result will not make your customer satisfied because it uh, what it shows to them is you are being incompetent with your job okay and as an employee your employer ex are expecting that you help the company's business okay so that's one and then attention to customers is very important for long-term success that is why companies conduct survey in order to get feedbacks from their customers now if they, they are really doing well or they improving or the customers are happy or whatever the customer wanted to uh, for the, the the company to 
probably give them or serve them in the near future. So that's one way of uh, achieving those things. So this one is an example of customer satisfaction survey. In this way, the employer would or the company would be able to 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 know no the the, the feedbacks of their their customers whether uh, the service they are giving is excellent good average or poor okay so like for example for number one how would you rate the overall service you have received from our company so of course if you're the customer if you're not happy of course you're going to do to, to rate the service the overall service to poor but if uh, an employee was able to deliver the service well or met your expectation and you are happy with the service given to you then most likely you will rate the overall service as excellent okay so now with this customer satisfaction survey this would also tell the employer or the company on what service they need to improve no okay so it would also actually guide them in uh, service innovation or product innovation okay ethical standards uh, this requires honesty fairness and justice in all business dealings actually when you say ethical standards it works or it applies to all companies whether big or small as long as you work with others no you should have this ethical standards very common example is being honest fair with your dealings okay then these qualities provide a foundation of trust from employees to customers the code of ethics or codes of conduct are the company standards made for their employees now when you start working of course especially if it's your first job uh, what will happen there is first before you start you undergo a company orientation during the company orientation all about the company's important details or, or information of the companies will be presented and uh, uh, also this code of conduct so the, the code of conduct actually is for the employees no? on what are the rules and regulations of the company that the employee should follow okay so the the employee should not violate such rules and regulations in order for the employee to continue working with the company okay and then the core values are also presented during the orientation and then these core values the code of conduct are actually uh or will guide the employee in working in the company, you know, like uh, you should one one provision there or one statement there that the employee should be honest in all their dealings. So that means you need to follow. You should be honest in work in in doing your work. Okay, and then procedure for handling violations of ethical standards wherein employees may be subjected to disciplinary action. Okay, this means that. It, during your orientation, actually, all those things should be presented, no? For the employees to be informed on what are the procedure if, in case, an employee violates a certain rules or rule of the company. Okay, like for example, if the employee is dishonest. Okay. So if a, if an employee commits such violation then there will be a process on how you will be dealt with no for example of course the, the department who is responsible for that is the human resources so they implement uh, the code of conduct i mean they, they enforce uh, the rules and regulations of the company so if the employee will commit dishonesty then the procedure there is uh, the employee will be made to explain no? so with the explanation with that written notice uh, notice to explain of course the violation will be cited in the actual offense what you committed what you did no as an employee why 
you were able to, I mean, why the, the company will make you explain. Okay. So again, there are specific procedure on uh, handling disciplinary action. Now, one quality is being responsible for teamwork. So employees work in team to complete tasks. That is what we meant, responsible teamwork. So as an employee, you should be able to work with other members of the company within your team, for example, in order to achieve such goal. Okay, so if you need to work hand in hand, so you should uh, be cooperative and responsible to um, work within your team. And then it also involves combining efforts of two or more people to accomplish a task or achieve a goal, especially if it's a group work, no? Wherein all members should be able to contribute or do his or her part in order to, to achieve such good. So for a team to function effectively, each team member, each, I'm sorry, sorry for the typo, each team member must understand the purpose of goals of the team. So for you to be guided, if you're a mem you are a member of the team, you should be oriented, no? Or be knowledgeable or be taught on what you need to understand. Like, for example, what's the purpose of doing this particular thing? This would help achieve the company's goal, for example. So each one should be, uh, be informed no? and be oriented. So that will help you be in line and guided no? as your responsibilities or your role within the group. Okay, then accept responsibility to complete his duties and communicate with the other team members. Okay, so each one of you within the group or within the team, you have your respective roles in achieving your objective no? or your goal. So if you need to communicate with others, for example, if you encounter problem and you do not know what or how to solve it, then you need to ask help from your co-members or co-team members uh, to teach you on how to solve that particular concern okay now what about global marketplace this is actually the area in which a company does its business now when you say global of course it involves uh, outside the philippines now or outside the country so in other words you are doing your business globally okay so could be you import your uh, products or services or export some raw materials or your products or services as well okay so with other countries so e-commerce also is where business conduct electronically as in making purchases or selling products via the world wide web okay example of this are like the Amazon, no, wherein you can actually buy products well, uh, outside the Philippines since uh, this is an international company selling online products. So that's what we call e-commerce, okay? Uh, locally, we also have our own Lazada and Shopee. So it affects how companies do business, like employees must travel to other places, advertising material and product product instructions must be available in many languages. So if you are into global marketplace or if you work especially in, in a multinational company wherein the business of your company involves uh, with different countries, no? wherein you, your services are being sold or or your products are being sold to other uh, uh, countries as well, okay? So there are certain employees that needs, like especially those higher position employees, like managers, for example, or sales managers, for example, or the training manager, for example, who trains new employees or a certain group of people in order to uh, 
uh, in order to uh, teach them how to do or what are their responsibilities are so they they need to travel most of the time no? it, it, especially if it's in multi uh, companies okay and if you are selling products outside uh, with the different countries like in brazil or in spain uh, uk no or like london so uh, china as well then you need to of course uh, have your product information or instructions in their respective languages for them to understand on how to use your product okay so that's uh, other aspect you would be able to learn in a global marketplace diversity this is having a workforce with people from a wide range of ethnic and cultural background this is actually especially if you are in a multinational companies uh, wherein you have work uh, co-employees who are with or belonging with different nationalities no especially like in an IT companies there are a lot of workers who are from other countries no who are foreigners okay because they are very yes, special skills for example is needed and they need to uh, hire those experts from other countries okay so training programs are conducted to help employees become aware of issues related to diversity example is ethnic and cultural background so if that's the case if you will be working with a company which has a diversified workers or employees then this partners for example will be uh, oriented no on how we do things here in the philippines okay like our culture uh the ethical ethic ethnic backgrounds of the philippines they will be oriented on that okay now if in case you will be be asked to travel or be assigned to a different country for example then you as a filipino like for example if you will be a transfer or be trained to singapore then before you start working then you need to undergo an ethnic and cultural background orientation okay for you to be able to adjust to the new new environment okay what about the general expectation for employees so companies expect the same work qualities in all employees okay so that is why orientation training is very important for the employees to really know, know what are the things that he or she needs to do so the information that he needs to acquire for him or her to do her or his job okay reliability productivity cooperativeness and independence in learning are important qualities for our for all employees why because if you are reliable then the company would be able to trust you that you are really uh, going to do your job no without supervision productive so you'll do your best to be efficient and productive on your own cooperative you cooperate with others and independence in learning so in other words you try to do your own initiative in order to learn no you should be independent so you you should not be a worker worker that would depend with other most of the time so with the orientation it is expected of you that you already know know what to do on your own because you were already trained and oriented on your uh, responsibilities okay so when you say reliability this is actually being dependable and trustworthy okay employees uh, so the company expect their employees to work on time so you don't need a lot of monitoring because they expect or they they know that you will work on time and then devote time on the job to complete work okay so they expect that in your eight hour work on a particular day they expect that you are being productive and you really do your job no without any extracurricular activities okay and then keep company business confidential and protect company assets so as part of the 
in, uh, mem or as member of the company, the company expects you to be what? Uh, to protect and safeguard or use the equipments properly. No? And of course, keep information within the company, especially those confidential ones. Productivity is demonstrated by doing an appropriate amount of work on time and according to instructions. So being productive. So if, for example, if within the day or for the eight-hour duty, you are expected to produce, if you are into a production worker, for example, you are expected to produce 100 items of a, whatever your product is. So that is your your target for the day but if you exceed that like you can do 120 for example so that is being you know uh, you excel no or you 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 were able to do more no aside from the normal or what is the regular numbers or standards of the company so valuable workers are aware of what they are accomplishing each day what they are accomplishing each day, each day so you are being a, a valuable worker if you are the you're a person who really value and who really knows what you what the company expect you to, to to achieve no or to accomplish each day of your job okay so you don't need monitoring or supervision because you are being responsible on how you do your job okay then managers discuss to employees in informal way. So if, for example, if you are not doing well, or probably your superior noticed that you uh, uh, you, uh, you commit a lot of mistakes, so most managers or superiors uh, do informal coaching or informal talk in order to help that employee, you know? So other managers expect workers to decide on their own what changes are needed to improve productivity, okay? So if you are being uh, reliable, so if you leave that in impression to them that you can be trusted, so some managers would uh, let their employees no, decide on what to do because he believed or she believes that you can really do your job well. No? So they will going to give you time no? to, to assess, to analyze, or discover by your own on what are you going to do in order to achieve such result. Now, what about barriers to high productivity? Okay. So, of course, these are very common, no? wherein an employee cannot meet the target or meet the expectation or probably fail the, for example, if you, you're you new, then you start as probationary, wherein you will be given six months, you will be monitored during that period if you will become regular or not, okay? Now, if you are a person that is not productive because you do these things, which we will call, barriers no on to, uh, in being uh, to become productive like you talk with friends your phone most of the time then chat with co-workers then fail to maintain an organized workstation and fail to set priorities and move from task to task because before anyone is completed so if you you are doing this, of course, you will be unproductive, okay? Uh, it is not just a waste of time, but it would uh, leave an impression to your superior that you are not a good worker, okay? Cooperativeness. Most office employees work with others daily. Of course, especially if you have several co-workers in your, in your office and then information must be shared and tasks often require more than a single worker okay 
So if you are in a in in a job that being dependent with others in order to complete your task, then you should be cooperative, uh, talk or interact with them. No, employees must be prepared to learn new skills and handle new tasks as circumstances change. So in other words, you should be flexible, no, and would be able to adjust whatever the situation is, no. And then you need to uh, learn new skills. Okay, if you will be given new tasks, you should be uh, flexible and not decline the offer. For example, no. Now most companies, even you have respective roles and responsibilities. Uh, it's, it's it is very common now, no. Now we do multitasking. We're in. There are times that you will you will be given another task or new task. And if you decline, for example, that will, that will leave an impression that you are lazy or not open to, to other things no? or learning, for example. Okay? So in other words, it would leave a negative impression to your superior. So as much as possible, if you will be given assignment or new tasks or other tasks not written in your job description, I would suggest or I would recommend that you do it, no? Because it would leave a positive impact on your superior. And then employees who believe they need to do what is outlined in their job descriptions are not effective workers. In other words, if you're a kind of worker that you are very focused on the tasks and responsibilities written in your job description, and what you have in mind is you only do those things, no? So for example, if you will be asked to do other things not written in your job description and you decline, you will tell your superior or your co-worker now it's not part of your job. So that is, an, uh, again, that will leave an impression negatively to your co-worker that you are not being cooperative or not open to new learnings or responsibilities, okay? And then another is independence in learning. So the employee's work cannot all be learned while you are a student. Of course, no? Although as a student, uh, it would be better if you try to explore no? other things aside from your subjects since most in the academe, uh, they are very, uh, of course, no? uh, they are very focused on the textbook, for example, uh, so it's very seldom for your for teachers to you know uh, give examples that are really uh, I mean actual situations in a job no or a more working in a particular company okay but in my case since I am uh, uh, I am just doing this uh, teaching job, on a part-time basis, so since I have a full job, full-time job in HR, then of course, uh, I think it is just right uh, to share with my students on what are really those actual happenings now in the workplace. Since uh, my intention here is for you, my students, to be prepared when you start working in the future, no? At least, pili mo ma makuratan no nga unsa dayni mao dayni at least you will be you will have an idea on what are the things that you need to do and what are the skills that you need to be prepared or to develop first in order for you to find a job later on no so at least you will be accepted because you all uh, have those skills mentioned earlier okay and then learning must be a lifelong activity so one of you during our first activity, uh, there was one question, uh, why am I still teaching in academe since I'm already, uh, when in fact I'm already uh, successful in the corporate world, okay? So, as I've said, uh, learning is a continuous, continuous activity, no? So, it doesn't stop. So for me, teaching is one way for me to learn new things. So I am not teaching 
because I wanted to just to teach my student, but I actually I am also learning in from you guys, from my students, especially those students who are very open to ask their teachers, no, or share their ideas. So actually, it it's a kind of two way thing, no. Uh, I I would be able to learn from you, and hopefully you will be able to learn from me. Okay. So again, learning is always there, no, whatever. Uh, status or young or old are you so learning is always there okay and then professional workers must have continuing education each year okay like for example accountants lawyers doctors uh, nurses they have this continuing professional education for uh, yeah uh, trainings and programs to give them continuous learnings no so they are required to get uh, particular units uh, every year since they cannot renew their license if they don't have this uh, cpd they call it cpd units okay so the, the purpose of that is of course for them to uh, to have a continued learning okay and what are the competencies for the office? So these are the common competencies required. Number one is composing and formatting letters and reports that we already discussed that. Creating spreadsheet or charts, creating and giving presentations. So especially if, for example, if your boss or superiors are managers, and then sometimes they will ask you to prepare a, their presentation, no? uh, ask you to prepare for their presentation. So if you have that skill, that would leave an impression, a positive impression to them. Then keeping workstation organized, learning software programs, uh, listening and following instructions, maintaining records and files, meeting deadlines, and working in teams effectively. Okay, so those are uh, basic competencies and important competencies that you should have in order to be, you know, uh, be preferred, no? Especially if you... Uh, start looking for an employment okay so that's end our topic for today and hopefully you learn something a lot if you have questions again i would encourage you to uh, send your questions to our class middle or pm or message me or do comment in our in this youtube uh, presentation uh, and I'll try to answer your questions there, you know. Okay, so at least we have, uh, we can clarify things that you think it's uh, difficult for you to understand. Okay, so that's all for today and have a nice day. Thank you.